You're listening to Force Fed Digital. BXU Heard. Party people in the place to be and fellow creatures of the night. Welcome to another edition of The Art of Bounce. I am. Ralph Anthony Garcia, also known as R4. The Art of Bounce, or Bounce for short, is a program where folks such as myself, the former bouncer, security guard, fire guard, bodyguard, etc., giving acknowledgement to police officers who don't abuse their authority, correctional officers who don't abuse their authority, parole officers who don't abuse their authority, and all the other officers who don't abuse their authority. Why did I utter these words so repeatedly? Because I, myself, had to endure certain abuses from my own partners. Y'all motherfuckers know who the fuck y'all are. Big shout to you bastards as well. Today on Bounce, we're going to go back to 2011, to a place I held down for a number of years called Old Gold, when they decided to turn the Queen's nightclub into an after-hour spot. I make a confession to you all, so grab a chair, hard donut, and stale coffee, have a seat, and a snack, and let's listen in. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with our daily prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We have a new person here to share with us today. Could you please state your name for the folks here, group? Hello, everyone. Hi. My name is Ralph, and I'm an addict. Hello, Ralph. As you might imagine, This is not going to be easy for me at all. This is coming from the heart. This is from the top of the head, from what I could patch together with my broken memories. Just wanted to share a few things with you, you know, a few things that go on in my mind and can't even lie, y'all. It's it's something I've been wanting to share for a long time, but I just didn't know who to talk to about it. It's not easy to talk about these things, but here I am today trying to share something. I'm a bouncer. Well, at least I used to be. And what I did, I fancied myself as one of the very best. You know, I I love to toot my own horn because this job, this career, this position, this thing, this work, whatever you want to call it, is so hard. It gets tough, man. You know, dealing with people and their attitudes And you're very thankful for those who have a con word for you. You know what I'm saying? And one has to really be thankful for that when it does happen that way. But um, life of a bouncer, life of a security guard, y'all see the pictures, y'all see the TV, y'all see the internet. You see what we go through. You see what others in my profession do to each other. However, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about me. And how I could have possibly survived a time in my career when it was difficult to maintain. Now allow me to explain. I worked in this place in Queens called Old Gold. Now Old Gold, I've worked there for a good three, maybe four years. They actually switched their name at one point. But I'll just call it old gold. I mean, I made enough money there to buy gold. And I never did, because I was stupid. (laughs) You know, I should have bought gold. I made enough money. I won't even lie. When you averaged about $700 to $1,000 a week, paying rent in New York like it's no problem, why didn't I think about it then? Well... In retrospect, it would have probably been disintegrated in this Bidenomic era. Quite the American way, isn't it? Anyhow, um, as a regular bouncer, you know, one under a team leader, I was fine with that. I would played my position inside the club as the floater. That's what I did. And after a while, 
the club then wanted to try an after-hour type situation. I was all for it. Apparently, the team leader, and this is where I mentioned Admiral again, peace to the Admiral. Yeah, he was all with it. Folks down with the team were with it. But everybody on the team was not going to be working after hours. So the Admiral chose me, his first draft pick. It would be four or five of us working the night. That was it. Maybe six, depending on the volume of the crowd. These parties. <laughs> These parties would start at 5 a.m., that is, after we would close the club at 4, get everything ready for the 5 o'clock hour. And boom, first day there, well, the first day the after hours took place, yeah, a lot of bridge and tunnel kids playing that line. It would go all the way around the corner at some times. You know, it would start at 5, we're letting everybody in. And, you know, such a stark contrast compared to the early evening from 10 to 4 to now from 5 to whenever. And almost immediately, you see the difference. They weren't playing hip-hop. They weren't playing any reggae. They weren't playing that upbeat, super club music they would play. This is dating back to 2011, in fact. So, if you've been in the club around the 2010s, <sighs> that god-awful, super-pop house music, that wasn't getting played here. We got all kinds of DJs, very well-known DJs from around the world coming through. And they'd play things ranging from old-school house to new-school techno. Just know the beat would just continue. Doof, 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 doof. That's all you'd hear. The melodies, after a while, they start turning into one long song. At least for me. I'd enjoy the old school house, obviously. But when they get into this new ish, I can't. I won't. Now, on this first day, it was interesting because, you know, I was kind of tired. And by this time, I've risen to the ranks of assistant manager. Right? I was looking out for the owner. I was his eyes and ears. Me being at this after hour, I don't know, however deserve it you want to call me, whatever, and the chosen few chosen to work this gig would um, handle their own way of surviving the night, as we like to call it. Man, okay, again, my first night, I was already tired, I was already exhausted, but the energy of the crowd kind of kept me up, even though I was turning into a zombie after a while. After a couple of weeks, I'd be like, yo, something gotta give. Now, <sighs> coffee? Yeah, I drank much of it. I mean, that was Admiral's thing. Every time we start the day or start the night, whatever, he would always bring us like a whole dozen coffees. Some of us prefer hot chocolate. We can go there too. So here we are, 2011. Sipping on our coffees for the next night at after hours. Letting in an eclectic class of people. Most of them are from Queens. And they're a fun-loving bunch. Folks from Jersey or wherever. Staten Island, you see them coming in too. Bougie folks, if you will, you know. <laughs> and there are times certain celebrities will make their way in through the doors. What a night it would be. Each and every time. See, <laughs> when you got these... People coming in in droves, those that like women like myself got to be weary, all right? Because these people really go out of their way to make themselves <laughs> And it's gotten to the point where they've paid thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to get their stuff done, their breasts, their <laughs> their face. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to get caught up, and you might just wake up to a Sunday surprise you wasn't prepared for. So, of course, brothers like myself, who's a, an assistant manager to a strip club, I'm going to know what's what. Moving on, moving on. Again, all kinds of people come into this place having themselves a good time. However, and I'm not even going to lie to you, 
This is where I started to get beat up a little bit. Like my feet, forget about it. I'm on my feet 75% of the time. And if I'm lucky enough to go to the 25% where I'm sitting down, in 10, 15 seconds, 25, not even a minute later, I'm back on my motherfucking feet running around town. After all, I'm the floater and I was the assistant manager to the strip club when it was open as a strip club. Now, when it would turn into the after hour, we're letting all of these people in. It's hard to keep up sometimes, okay? It's hard because one, I'm sleepwalking. I'm already tired from the last gig I did. Here I am doing another gig. And mind you, this would be weeks later, long after it's been established. We got a new afty in Queens. People in Queens love afties. People who love afties love coming to this afties. And how am I supposed to keep up with everything being so tired? I'll tell you how. Cocaine. Me, an avid weed smoker, I guess I'm going to always have that film of calm or whatever have you. I'm calm. To be honest, I smoke weed to keep the demons at bay. And I smoke a blunt before I go into work. I smoke a blunt after. Now, being that this is my second gig, and traditionally I'd smoke a blunt before starting said gig, I wouldn't even smoke the blunt after my first gig, knowing I was going to start the second gig. Gig? So, you know, I got so desperate to the point where I saw somebody inside the place. Yo, do you know somebody with some fucking yay, yo? Huh? Because I need it. Now, I'm not even going to sit here and lie like I've never used yay, yo, before. I was a young teenager using fish scale when I sold it on my block. But that's not that story. This is this story. Now, these crumb bums, knowing damn well, they got 20s on them, selling them for $40 dollars. And if I'm foolish enough not to grab something in the hood before going all the way to Queens to do my job, then I'd have to do it. Then I'd have to pay $40 for dollars for $20 back. If I do it in the hood, then I can do the reverse. These crumb bums selling drugs in my fucking club when they're not supposed to? Okay, great. I'll be in competition with them. Why not? They were going to do it even after I told them not to. So why not I? Who's going to stop me in my place? So after a while, I got to know the deal. And, uh, am I working afties? How many nights am I working afties? All right, three nights this week. Boom. I get just enough from uptown to take back downtown with me. You're not going to get me for $40 anymore. And, uh, man, how many times am I going to do that to myself? I mean, you knew you were doing too much. I was doing too much. And... After a long while working the afties, I've noticed I started to get sick. One time in front of my team, there I was throwing it up in front of everybody. People thinking, I'm a junkie now. No, bitches. All I did was cocaine. But you leave it up to these assholes. I'm doing heroin. I'm sniffing Molly. I'm doing Special K. That's what these kids were doing in there, you know. And according to them, because I was throwing up in front of everybody, I happened to be doing those drugs too. Thanks a lot. is who I thought were my partners, who I would have died for. You see that? That. That ain't f***ing cool. F*** y'all for that. I'm telling you, in this podcast, I will definitely be screaming on some of you motherfuckers that don't deserve to be in this game. Bunch of punk sish. Huh? You talk that way about your partner? Got you. I get it. But you see, the cocaine helped better than coffee, right? Because coffee will have me pissing every 10 seconds. Cocaine would have me sharp. That's just the way it was. But I knew after a while it turned into abuse because I was up in the afties all the f***ing time. Whenever Admiral wasn't there, I'd be the one taking the reins. Or maybe another person if I'm not there. But understand, it's a tough job when you're f***ing sleepwalking all the time. And when your saving grace was cocaine. 
Well, hell, all right, you use it. But then, at the end of the day, after all is said and done, when the after hours is closed, after 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, sometimes even 1 o'clock, sometimes even 3 o'clock, sometimes it goes well into the next evening, 6, 7, even 8 o'clock at night, I have to go back home after that. And I go pick up my son from whoever might have been watching him, head back home to 135th Street, where we lived at the time, and there I was with a nose filled with coke, and my son, he's half asleep, looking like a little zombie, because I'm dragging him from one house to another. It's like, I look at him, and it's like, I wish he'd forgive me, because here I am doing what I need to do to keep us in this apartment, by hook or by crook, but at the end of the day, I make sure he's good. He's good. No matter what I did or have done, I made sure he was good, though. I made sure that rent was paid, of course, until I couldn't do it anymore. And um, there's no possible freaking way I can never do that to myself again, especially these days when all they want to do is cut it with fentanyl. There's no way I'm going to touch cocaine ever again. Here we are some years later, and my son is almost grown. And I think he understands the struggle. I mean, we all still kind of struggling today. So that'll never stop, I suppose, until maybe we hit the lottery sometime. Maybe we hit the lottery for a couple of mil. Hopefully a bill. But, um, folks, I'm pretty sure this is just, this is just a prelude. This is just a precursor, a preface, if you will, of all the stories I will be sharing with you coming out of this after hour spot. You know what I'm saying? Big shout to my team, Admiral and them, those that are still cool with me to this day. The mother motherfuckers, y'all know who you are too. Y'all deserve to get smacked. That's neither here or there, but I would have died for every one of y'all. See what I'm saying? Now. With that being said, folks, tune in next time for other stories coming out of the after hours. Thanks, y'all, for letting me share. Peace. I promise you all, the only reason I left Old Gold was because I had to get a kidney stone the size of a baseball removed. Subsequently, I had a stent put into me to flush out whatever else might have been going on with me, but it was enough to keep me out of commission for a year. To all you f who assumed the worst about me, it's a hoodie swallow, and I hope you confess the most faces. F you. Yeah. Now, for those who've always believed in me, like my guy, the Admiral, those down with his team that always had a nice thing to say, who always had a kind word, those who I gladly had their back and they had my back too, back to back fighting everybody and stuff. Big shout to y'all. I always got y'all on my mind and I hope y'all all are doing well. And I want to thank others who believed in me, like my children. My grown daughters, who gave me the best grandchildren ever, and to my strapping sons, I love you. I love you all. Not just like cooked food, but the milkshake, orange juice, or a hell of a nice sized glass of cold water to go with such a meal. I love you. And that's word. Big shout to the strangers who became good friends and my friends who are still my friends going on 30 plus years. Please connect with me through www.solo.to forward slash RGMC 2407. Choose a platform, Facebook group X. IG, Threads, Gmail, and YouTube at RGMC2407. Also on YouTube, please subscribe to the Art of Bounce standalone channel. Join the United Ronin Networks for uncensored versions of these Bounce episodes. Follow and kindly leave a rating for the podcast over at Force Fed Digital via Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or Spotify. Thank you all once again for taking your valuable time off your impossible schedules to tune in. Now, if you see a bouncer holding down that front door, or you see him or her floating on that dance floor, please show them a little bit of love, because they are trying their best with the 
god awful little bit of money that they're paying to make sure you and yours are having a good time and feel secure. Be safe.